in society might like for the minimum number of children to die in fires as possible, which gets you to sideline that consideration in favor of is there a child uh, who's faced with a fire who, I'm, who I might rescue. Religions do exactly this restructuring of values because they say something like, actually, your goodness in risking your own life to save that other child from a fire is observed and it is, it is calculated and you will be rewarded for it well, in some way. That's, that, that's one possible benefit of some religions, right? Good. And... Okay, so you put that on the balance, but I have a lot to put on the other side of the sure balance. Sure you do. Right? I know you've got a never-ending list. Look, right. I yeah. want to... I I well, which, which, that's what I'm yep. trying to point out to Jordan but, here, which he actually acknowledges, which is that he's got a big stack of good things that come from this heuristic, well, but he's also acknowledging but, but this is actually that... Get, this, this is our core disagreement here, which is however you want to... However the balance is going to swing, I, I, the, the, the difference between us here is that I think we read the utility of, of, of anything, but in this case, religious thinking, as evidence of, you, you read it as evidence of something, perhaps, literally true. Inevitability. Depends okay. on what you mean yeah. by literally. Yeah, so, so, and I, I view that as a, a kind of version of either the genetic or naturalistic fallacy, that it's just like, whether, whether that's, it's, it's useful now here for us, it doesn't, doesn't argue that it's the best way of getting those good things. I mean, the, my argument here is that religion gives people bad reasons to be good where good reasons are available. Okay, right? so, and, so... And that's a problem, right? right. And, and, and because good, re, good reasons scale better than bad reasons. And I think we can under... Even if you take the case where religion is clearly useful in a life-saving, utterly benign way, uh, in, in virtually all of those cases, I think I, could, I can get you there by some other way without the, the downside, or if not, that's just one of those cases where, yes, the fiction was more useful than how, any possible truth. How do you truth. distinguish a religious system from an a priori perceptual structure? Well, if you can convert to it or away from it in a single conversation, I would say if it, it doesn't go very deep. Well, you, you're, you're only, I would say that for much of that, you're only converting at a very superficial level. Well, no. You're converting at the level of conscious apprehension, and most of your cognition is done through unconscious processing. Well, it, so it's superficial. It's, it's just, it's just a fact about us that most of people's religious attachment is born of having it drummed into them by their parents. Right, if I mean, but the truth well, is... Well, no, their parents and their parents' parents and their parents' yes, parents' Yes, exactly, parents but if we did the same thing with Batman and Spider-Man, it would have the same effect. Right, like if, if if you relentlessly told children, right? I mean, I've I've got you know two little girls who are you know dressed up like Batgirl right now. They love Batgirl. There's nothing. I don't have to do anything to make them more enthusiastic about superheroes apart from just showing them the pictures of superheroes, right? If I told them, in addition to how look how fun this is to dress up like Batgirl, uh, in addition, you're you're going to burn in hell for eternity. If you lose your emotional attachment to Batgirl, even for a minute, right? Well, then it's going to be Batgirl for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Especially if the entire culture is is doing likewise. And I, you know, again, this is well. As, I have, as Eric, uh, as Brett pointed out already, a bad tool is better than no tool at all. And if Batgirl is the closest approximation to a divine figure that you can conjure up, it beats the hell out of none at all. And if Batgirl didn't well, partake of certain archetypal structures, no one would give a damn about Batgirl. Okay, I'm, I'm so going to Spider-Man and Batman. I'm going to spare play you. A role, play a role in the culture. All right. Because yes. look, well, hold it's on. not accidental. It's not accidental that superhero stories have a structure. Well, and to say that, well, Batman and Spider-Man are obvious fictions, and we could use them as no, moral no, exemplars, no, no. which you're, we you're do. You're taking the wrong end. You're taking the wrong end of this. I, I'm not. I'm not minimizing the power of stories. Right. I'm saying we can understand their power without recourse to believing things we shouldn't believe. 